God is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Yes, so I said Mark 7 verse 24. Mark, Mark chapter 7. Let's look at verse 24. Well, as we get there, understand again that God's will and God's plan for us is good. Amen. If you want to summarize his will, his plan for our lives, you can sum it up by saying it is just what? Good. Hallelujah. Good is what he has in mind towards you. Good is what he has in mind towards you. Hallelujah. And that is why he sent his son Jesus. That is why Jesus died on the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why Jesus went to the cross to bring that good to us. We'll unfold that as we go on. But Mark chapter 7. This is a familiar story. But let's look at it again this morning. And from thence he arose, talking about Jesus, and went into the borders of Ty and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it. In other words, he came in quietly, just he didn't want to be disturbed. He didn't want to um, pull any crowd. He had been out ministering. He had been out teaching and preaching and talking and talking and talking. He would talk to the Pharisees. He would talk to the crowd. He will heal. He will teach. And that is what he came for. Amen. Acts um, 10.38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. And that was the sum total of what he was doing here on earth. Teaching, preaching, healing. Teaching, preaching, healing. Amen. But this time, he just entered into a house in Ty. You know, came to that region, Ty and Sidon. He entered into a house and he just didn't want to be known. But see the next statement. But he could not be hid. Now you hide greatness. <laughs> Praise God. Greatness cannot be hid. Cannot be hidden. Praise the name of the Lord. Greatness cannot be hidden. You cannot be hidden. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. You may be in a place of hiding for a moment. But sooner or later, you will be known. If that is you, say amen. If you believe it, say amen. <laughs> Praise God. You know why? Because in every, in the heart of every human being is a desire to be significant. A desire to be important. A desire to, to, to do something out of the ordinary. To be used of God so to speak, for us who are saved, to be used of God. Amen. And you can't be used of God and be hidden. Hallelujah. There is a place for hiding. There is a time for hiding. But there is a time where you are known. Like Jesus wasn't known, you know, before the age of 30. But when he just turned 30, he knew it was time for ministry and he stepped out. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so he came into this house just thinking, oh, let me just have it quiet. Let me just have it simple and easy. But he could not be heed. You cannot be heed. Let me use Bible terms. <laughs> Praise God. Keep walking with God. Keep doing God's will. Keep serving where you are. As a matter of fact, nobody serves God and remains small. Hallelujah. 
Nobody serves God, serves God. I'm talking about service now to God and remain small. That is why when you come into the body of Christ for any meaningful child of God, sooner or later you are wondering, what can I do? Is that not so? <laughs> Praise God. And so we have local assemblies where people can serve, where people can give of themselves to service in the kingdom of God. So you find something to do. Whether it's sweeping, sweep in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. If it's driving, drive in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it's washing, wash in the name of the Lord. If he's talking to people, talk in the name of the Lord. And as you stay faithful there, as you stay consistent there, this is not a worker's meeting. But in case you're not a worker, in case you're not into service in the house of God, I want to challenge you, rise up to it. Amen. Hallelujah. God has not called us to warm benches or warm seats. One of the luxury seats we're sitting on. These are not benches. These are luxury seats, isn't it? And so we're not called to warm it. But to do, to act, to be active in the kingdom of God. So Jesus could not be hidden. You can't serve and you are hidden. You can't serve and remain small. You can't serve and not rise up to notoriety. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That's not the primary reason why we serve. That's the truth. That's not why we serve. But it's just that you can't help it. It will surely come. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? It will surely come. But be faithful where you are. Hallelujah. Be faithful where you are. So Jesus could not be healed. Let's go back to our story. I really wanted to show us that. Let's go to the next verse. He could not be hid. Why? Because a woman spotted him. Just when he thought, ah, oh, thank God nobody knows me here. Let me just, you know, let me just rest a bit. But a woman spotted him. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him. What happened to this woman? She heard of him. It's important what we're hearing. It's important what we're giving our ears to hear. Because what we're hearing will inform what we do, how we act. Hallelujah. Because of what she heard, because of what she heard, she came and she found Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And in this last days that we are living in brethren saints of God be mindful of what you're hearing it's not everything that has Christ on it that is gospel it's not everything that has Christ on it that will uplift your spirit the bible says that prophecy is for exhortation for comfort for edification in other words, the teaching and the preaching of the word is unto all of these things. For exhortation, you are exhorted, you are, you are taught, you are inspired, you are encouraged for exhortation, for edification. And for, what's the third one again? For exhortation, for comfort, thank you. For comfort, God's word comes to comfort us. Oh, God's word never comes to hack us down. No, 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 it's not God. Praise the Lord. It is never God to hack you down and make you feel condemned and make you feel terrible and make you, you have the Holy Ghost in you. You know that? When you go wrong, you know it. It's just that some people have just chosen, they must keep violating that conscience. You know when you're going off. We all know it. <laughs> Praise God. Because your spirit is alive. You are born again. Your, your, your spirit has come alive. By virtue of the life of God that came, came into your inner man. When you gave your life to Christ. And then the Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit. Praise God. So you can't tell me you don't know where you are going wrong. 
It's just that some people just decide hmm, they don't want to listen. They have made up their mind what they want to do is what they want to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. That cheating, I must cheat. Holy Ghost, you can't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> in line, I must lie today. In doing this, I must do it today. And so you already, he's already, you already know it on your inside. Praise God. Glory be to God. I'm saying that to say that God's word does not come to condemn us, to hack us down, to tear us apart. No. God's word will always come to encourage, to comfort. And even as it's coming, in those areas that you know, mm, I know try here. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Light to just shine there. Hallelujah. And guess what we ought to do? We ought to just be quick to make the adjustments. Hallelujah. Quick to make the adjustments. Don't linger. Don't. If you love God, you don't want to sin. That's the simple truth. Hallelujah. The I want to sin is not there. When you love God. You may miss the mark. Come back. Find your way. Come back. Hallelujah. So God's word always comes to edify us. To encourage us. To comfort us. And so it's important what we're hearing. I'm saying that to talk about what this woman heard. She heard good news. Maybe there were some people that told her about this. Your daughter. Hey. Who's your daughter? <clears throat> hey. No hope. No hope. They may not say it with their mouth, but their actions would have told you everything. But I don't know how this woman heard about Jesus. But when she heard he was in her vicinity, though Jesus just wanted to have a quiet arrest, she came to him because of what she heard. Lend your ears, not just lend your ears, stick your ears to hearing good tidings. Stick your ears to hearing God's word. Hallelujah. Thank God we can never have overdose of God's word. <laughs> no overdose. No overdose. Oh, keep hearing. Keep hearing. Keep the word of God playing around you. I know you are walking. I know you are running errands. I know you have things to do during the day. But find time. Find ways. These days, you see people plug their ears, isn't it? Listening to one thing or the other. Sometimes even security guards. And I'm wondering, so when somebody comes and haunts, how will you hear? Both of your ears are. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's here until they come and they shake the gate. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But I'm saying find a way to hear the word of God. More than your favorite TV program. Hear God's word. Many times in the time when needs arise or when situations arise and you're searching for the wisdom of God, many times it will come from something you have heard. Hallelujah. It will come from something you have heard. God will show you pictures from things you have heard. But if you have not heard, or you have not heard well, you have not heard good things. Yes, you have heard things, but you have not heard good things. Guess what will be coming up? Negative situations. Oh, that person said there is one Baba. So let's go. Because that's what you have been hearing. Amen. <coughs> Praise God. Oh, somebody said they did it this way, did it that way. That's what you have been hearing. The way God can speak to you is from the abundance of what is in your heart. Praise God. Glory be to God. So what we hear matters a lot. Hear and hear and hear and hear. And when you are done hearing, hear and hear and hear and hear again. <laughs> Glory be to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we need wise counsel in the evil days that we live in. We need the counsel of God, I tell you, per second. Not the counsel of man, not the wisdom of man. It's very obvious in the world we live in today that's been powered by the wisdom of man. That wisdom is failing. 
you must go to school. You must spend so, so, so years. You must do this. Then do NYC. Then you are sure of a good job. <laughs> Is he happening? <laughs> then huh? they will tell you, oh, in those days, by time before you finish, a car is waiting for you. A job is waiting for you. It's okay. But can you see, it's deteriorating by every passing day. And all that can stand is the counsel of God. Hallelujah. So hear. Be big on hearing. Be big on hearing. Be big on hearing. But thankfully, this woman did not stop at what she heard. And came and fell at his, at his feet. She stepped out on what she heard. She acted on what she heard. She responded to what she heard. Praise God. <laughs> if all we're doing is hearing and not acting, it will be detrimental. Praise God. It will be detrimental. It will not produce. But having heard, she stepped out. The same thing with the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible said she heard about Jesus and she came in the press. It was not convenient. It was not suitable to step out. But she stepped out all the same. The, the odds were obviously against her. Because with her situation, she ought not be in the midst of people. Not to talk of... Uh, uh, um, highly placed people in the, in, the, in the society at that time. Jairus was there. All kinds of people were there. And should they have known what her situation was, she should have been stoned. She should have been thrown out of the city. But in the midst, against all odds, say against all odds, against all odds, she acted on the word of God. She acted on what she heard, rather. She acted. <laughs> Praise God. Many times it won't be convenient to act. To. Praise God. But you've got to step out all the same. You've got to step out all the same. And so this woman heard and came and fell at Jesus' feet. And she knew. That she's a stranger. She didn't belong to the covenant. But she came all the same. The odds were still against her. <laughs> Amen. The odds were still against her. She didn't have a part in the covenant. She was not a Jew. Amen. She was not a Jew. She was a heathen. But she came. And guess what her situation was? Her daughter, her young daughter, had an unclean spirit. Even if it was an adult that has an unclean spirit, I, I believe you know it's terrible. Not to talk of a young daughter, a young girl. That's to tell you how evil the enemy can be. He has no mercy. Oh. No mercy. My pastor always quotes, the tender mercy of the wicked is what? Cruelty. Wickedness. Wickedness, 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 wickedness of the, I mean, the way wicked thoughts are just being, are just being um, exercised this day. You just wonder that somebody would think of how to destroy another being, not even an animal, another, a fellow human being. Wickedness, that is all he's about. Please don't parley with the devil. Amen. If you're hearing me online, don't parley with the devil. He has got nothing good to give you. Nothing good to offer you. Nothing good. It may seem like it's rosy. But at the tail end of it, your reward for being used of him is what? Cruelty. The same cruelty he has used you to, you know, perpetuate everywhere. He will give you ten times more to reward you. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, I can't imagine <laughs> how people will you spend their lives serving the devil. And they are ending and it's time, I mean, they end up killing themselves. 
at the prime of their lives. If that is not wickedness, I don't understand. I don't know what wickedness is. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm saying that to say the devil has nothing good to offer. He comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. Period. And when you see that happening, don't call God's name there. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. That's how God does it. Does his things. <laughs> Where? Hallelujah. When God created heaven and earth, when he finished creation, he said, he saw everything. Everything was what? Good. Day one, everything was good. Day two, everything was good. Day up to day six, everything was what? Good. So where are we getting ours from? Praise the name of the Lord. But understand that God is good. Understand that his mercy endures forever. Understand that his thoughts towards you are thoughts of good, not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. Understand, and I tell you, this is one key to enjoying the goodness of God. To enjoy whether it's miracle you want, whether it's a need you want met in your life. Understanding the fact that God is good, period. And he has your ultimate good at heart. Praise God. He's not out to torture you. Let me punish her. Let's see how, how, how well she can, she can, she can stand. <laughs> Amen. No. He's a good God. He's a good God. Say he's a good God. Say he's a good God. Nobody is wondering, if he's a good God, why hasn't this happened in my life? If he's a good God, why hasn't that happened in my life? Hello, have other things happened in your life? He's a good God. And if those things have happened, then this one will still happen. Because you're still alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. And life is still going on. Praise God. Except if you say it's over. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our God is a good God. Our God is a good God. He's mindful of you. His thoughts towards you are thoughts of good, not of evil. To give you a hope. And a future unexpected end. Oh, be confident in that. Be rest assured in that. Be rest assured in that. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are there people who are excited about this God? This good God, this faithful God. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by na nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Only God can, I mean, only eternity will show us what exactly the situation was with this woman. But when, even just when a child is ill, you know how it's not a good atmosphere in the house. Hallelujah. Not to talk of the fact that she was possessed by a devil. Maybe she'll keep them awake all night. <laughs> Manifesting, tearing things apart. Run out, they'll bring her. <laughs> bring her back. Praise God. I, mean, I don't know how many of you watched the movie The Exorcist <laughs> in those days. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible movie. Yeah, I, I mean... There's nothing good about the devil. Praise God. But this woman was torn apart because of her daughter. And because of that, knowing she didn't have a part in the covenant, she still came to Jesus. I've heard of him. I've heard he's a good man. Maybe she heard about how he healed blind but males. She heard about the woman with the issue of blood. She heard about her neighbors who were healed. Who were touched. Or people even in other nations. And now hearing that, oh... He's in her region. She went there. She besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Let's go to the next verse. That was her desire, period. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. Which children is he talking about? Talking about the Jews. Talking about the children of the covenant. Let them enjoy the covenant first. 
Okay? For it is not meat, it is not right to take the children's bread and cast it onto the dogs. It is not okay that this food I have prepared for my children, I will now give dogs. Do you do that? No. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. No. He said it is not meat, it is not okay. It is not okay. But let us go to the next verse. Well, this woman, knowing that today, I'm not living here lie, lie, without an answer. <laughs> Many times when you draw, draw the line in the sand like that, you see manifestation. She said, no, I'm not living without an answer. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, you have spoken well. You are right. Your word never falls to the ground. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yet the dogs under the table, they eat. Of the crumbs. Of the children's crumbs. My goodness. My goodness. Talk about wisdom. Talk about, talk about desire. No, it's desire. It's desire that birthed this out of her. Sometimes people think they have a desire. Mm -mm. If you can just give up easily at that desire, it's not a desire. It's, ah, I want to. I want to. Then you step out. And the lion roars, whoa, at you. I say, oh, no, I don't want it again. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, I don't want it again. <laughs> no desire. Hallelujah. There was no desire. Praise the name of the Lord. Proof of desire is that you are ready to stand and get it. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Praise the name of the Lord. So many things, people are just wishing. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish this will happen. I wish I can have this. I wish I can be that. I wish. <laughs> but I ask now, how many of you like, I admire pilots and you want to be a pilot? Some people will lift up their hands. Okay, go and buy form tomorrow. <laughs> Enroll. Hey, you know, reach like that. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God, or whatever else it is. But this woman, based on her desire, for the fact that she knew, no, 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 I'm not going to have another sleepless night over this child, that this man is here and I'm standing before him, I am getting my desire today. And so she answered Jesus and said, yes, you are right. Please don't give the children's bread to us dogs. And she didn't get angry that she was called a dog. Hallelujah. That was what they tried. They were called at that time. Amen. So you don't get angry and say, ah, ah, is it because I need something? You're now insulting me. You don't reach like that. Hallelujah. But she said, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Oh, see, 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 see. Is your, I, don't, I don't need the whole loaf. Just give me a crumb. Because I know what is in that bread will be in that crumb. What is in that loaf will be in that crumb. The power in the loaf, it will also be found in the crumb. Hallelujah. Glory be to, to God. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is good. <laughs> Our God is good. But you know, for us, guess what? It's not just the crumbs he gives us. He gives us the whole loaf. He has given you the whole loaf. He has given you the precious blood of Jesus. He has given you Jesus who laid down his life for you to be free. Hi, please don't just see that Jesus died for the world. Say Jesus died for me. Personalize the gospel. Many times people don't receive because you are always seeing general, general, general. And in looking at things, generally you are seeing yourself as a drop in the ocean. As a drop, as an insignificant part. No, 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 no. I know we are the righteousness of God. But I tell myself, I am the righteousness of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I know we're all children of God. But I tell myself, I'm a child of God. God loves me. 
God is mindful of me. God cares for me. He has said he will never leave me nor forsake me. Hallelujah. I am not looking at this in church alone. Everywhere I go, that is how I see myself. And that's how we ought to see ourselves. He has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So why should we be afraid? Tell me, so where is the place of fear there? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so Christ, God has given it all to us. And we can have it all. Say, I can have it all. Say, I can have it all. If Christ paid for it, it is yours. And Christ paid for health. Christ paid for healing. Christ paid for wholeness. Christ paid for prosperity, for abundance, for surplus. Christ paid for you to have the good life. Say, the good life is for me. Say, the good life is for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And see what happened here. Let's go to the next verse. And he said unto her, for this saying, go your way. The devil is gone out of your daughter. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say, eh? You are asking, you are still asking for crumbs. <laughs> no, 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 no. For this you're saying, you know why? Because it was her faith that pulled it. Praise God. Jesus did not come there that day saying, ah, it's a Phoenician woman. Hey, where are you? Where are you? Come and take your miracle. Come, 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 come. Come and take, come and touch. No, she came. And she pulled it. He just came to rest. He just came to hide. He just came so that he's not known. But this woman said, in taking my miracle today, I am taking it. I'm not going back to see a child possessed with devils. I don't know how this man will do it. Whether he will follow me. Whether he will touch me. Whether he will just breathe on me. Whether he will just even whatever. But I'm not leaving this place. She pulled it out of him. She pulled it out of him. She pulled it out of him. Praise the Lord. Ah, you can pull whatever you desire. You can pull whatever you desire. Praise God. Oh no, we, we, we don't have to, we don't have to go without. You don't have to go without. Say, I don't have to go without. Yes, you don't have to go without. You can pull it. It doesn't matter where they have sat and they have concluded and they have locked and they have said, this one cannot happen for this person. <laughs> That's a lying sign and wonder. I say it's a lying sign and wonder in the name of Jesus. Because there's no door. The door that God has not shut, no man can shut. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Look at it, Jesus just gave it to her. Said, it on, said to her, for this you're saying, go. The devil is already gone out. You have pulled it already. You have taken it. Just go. Go and enjoy your miracle. <laughs> go and enjoy your miracle. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know what is not in order in your life. It can be put in order. It can be put in order. The Bible says God makes the crooked places straight. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45. I think it's verse 2. He breaks in pieces the gates of brass. He cuts in sunder the bars of iron. There is nothing that can limit him. Nothing holds him down. When it was time for the children of Israel to get out of Egypt. Oh, <laughs> Pharaoh tried to hold them back. With all kinds of excuses. All kinds of tricks. All kinds of things. But the mighty hand of God pulled the children of Israel out of Egypt. Hallelujah. He led them. The Bible said he led them. So I can just imagine. Maybe he, just, he was just holding their hands. Walking out with them. And Pharaoh could not do anything about it. Amen. 
Don't term anything impossible because you serve a God with whom all things are possible. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever it is that's standing before you can be turned over. Praise God. It can be turned over. It can be overturned. It can be overturned. It can be this report today. But tomorrow, the report can change. The report can change. Hallelujah. Because we deal with a God with whom nothing is impossible. With whom all things are possible. All things possible. If a woman at the age of 90 could give birth to a child, tell me what is impossible with our God. If a virgin can conceive of a child without the aid of a man, tell me what is impossible with our God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let barriers be broken off of your mind right now. Let barriers be broken. Let those limitations be taken off of you. Doesn't matter how the disease, how long the disease has been. It doesn't matter how long it has been. It can be brought to an end. When Jesus got to that pool, Bethesda, and asked the man, will thou be made whole? Simple question. Simple wire question. I'll be jammed. Yes or no. <laughs> Abi started writing an essay of how long he had been there. How everyone has been going in. How they have stopped him from going in there. But will thou be made whole? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Will thou be made whole? And he simply told him, rise up. You don't need to jump in the pool. Just rise up. Take your bed. Go. Amen. He's a God that can change, change things on your behalf. Yes, you must go. They must jump into that pool to be healed. But this one, he says, rise up. Take up your bed and go. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. You serve a God that does the impossible. You serve a God that moves mountain, mountains. Hallelujah. We serve a God that nothing is too hard before. Nothing is impossible with him. Nothing. Nothing. Say nothing. Nothing. What does nothing mean? Nothing. Not anything. <laughs> Amen. Not one thing. Not one thing. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want to say to you, child of God, so you're standing and trusting God, believing God. I don't know what is before you and you're believing him. Keep the greatness of your God before you. Keep the greatness of your God. Let it be big before you. And that is what hearing will do to you. It will always magnify to you the greatness of our God. And it will make the situation look like, remember the 12 spies when they went into spy the land of Canaan. And they all came back. Ten came with an evil report. It's an evil report when that report is not magnifying Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. If that report does not magnify the name of Jesus, it's an evil report. God had told them, I've given you this land. But you know what? Send men, let them go and look at the land. Let them just come and you know, stir up your faith. Let them just ginger you guys so you, you're eager to go into that land. I'm sure that was the aim of it. Hallelujah. But they went and they were seeing the wrong things. You know why? They didn't have the picture of what God, what God had told them about the land before them. So they were seeing the wrong things. Of course, the, can we just go there quickly? We'll soon be done. This is um, Numbers 13. Numbers 13. Numbers 13. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure of what verse it is now. But there was a verse there where they started seeing all the tribes that were there. All the tribes. Oh, the, these ones are there. These ones are there. The giants are there. And they are all well equipped. Was that what they were to be looking at? Hallelujah. I'm talking to us. Was that what they were supposed to be looking at? No, because, because you have got to answer. 
You have to answer because when the devil comes and starts telling you, starts showing you how impossible what you're trusting him for, trusting God for, is, then you have got to make up your mind. Did I ask you for a situation report? <laughs> Did I ask you to analyze it for me? <laughs> have you forgotten that my God is El Shaddai? Hallelujah. So when it comes before you, when those pictures begin to come to you and they are contrary to what the word of God has said, you've got to cast them down and magnify the word of God. Praise God. Cast them down and magnify what? The word of God. What God has said. Bring it before you. Start showing you, ah, I see how insecure this state is. If only you know, like people say, if only you know, God can, if only we know how Nigeria is besieged. But you tell yourself, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Every tongue that rises against me, in judgment I condemn. God has given his angels charge over me. Those become the pictures that you are seeing beyond anything that you're hearing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That is how to cast down imaginations. That is how to fight spiritual warfare. Praise God. Countering what the enemy is showing you with what God has said. Praise God. Because the devil will not appear to you in a fork, with a fork and a, a tail a, and horns and an ugly face and smelly breath. Amen. You will not appear to you smelling, stinking. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know this is the devil. I cast you, I bind you. <laughs> no. It's in those thoughts. Those little thoughts. Those thoughts. Hallelujah. Ah, the price of this. Hey, the price of that. Hey, hey, this one, that one. In the midst of those thoughts, what should you say? My God supplies my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm a giver and I'm a tither. And money comes to me now in the name of Jesus. I walk in the overflow. I'm not living a scratching life. Hallelujah. I walk in abundance. I walk in plenty. Surplus. Too much. You have got to say that to yourself. That is how we fight. Too. Amen. It's not for church. It's not only in the four walls of this church. Hallelujah. When you're walking on the street and something happens or you see a picture and the devil tells you, hmm, you are next. You tell, them with, tell him with long life, he satisfies me and shows me his salvation. Hallelujah. Go to the end of the matter. Declare the end of the matter. Be like your father God who declares the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That is our part in enjoying the goodness of God. Where this is not happening and you are just keeping quiet. And pictures are flying. Because pictures fly around our minds every day, every night. Even when you are sleeping. That's why some people will sleep and see things chasing them. <laughs> Hallelujah. God forbid. Amen. May you rise up to be the one chasing them. Praise the name of the Lord. Why? Because pictures are flying. Pictures are flying. And the devil is just bringing pictures to just get your agreement. Hallelujah. To get your what? Agreement. To get you aligning to them. Once you agree, remember he's like a roaring lion. He is not a lion. But he is like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may. Why is he showing you pictures? If he can do it, he should go ahead and do it. Praise God. But because he knows Hey, in the law of life, he needs your permission. Just like God needs your permission to function. Hallelujah. And that is where you now stand. And you choose which one you believe. Like Joshua said to the children of Israel. Choose you this day. Who you will serve. 
So when those pictures are flying, choose. What are you going to say? What are you going to believe? Are you going to settle for those pictures? Or you're going to rise up with the word of the Lord from your heart, from your inside and speak it. Please, in speaking this word of the Lord, bear in mind, you don't need to feel. Some people think you must feel an anointing, then you know that hair. Hey, see, just speak God's word. It is his word, it's not your word. Is it your word? Are you the one that said no weapon formed against you will prosper? If it's you that said it, the devil will beat you blue black. But thankfully it is God who has said it. So declare his word to the situation. Say what he has said. Agree with what he has said. Speak it out. The devil is telling you, ah, you will never marry. Eh, you will never carry your child. Say, no, I'm a fruitful, joyful mother of children. I'm a joyful mother of children. I'm a fruitful vine. Hallelujah, my body carries seed. And it carries it to full term in the name of Jesus. Eh, hey, unto Zion there shall be no miscarriage. Hallelujah. I will not cast my young before my time. Speak God's word. Speak it. That is our warfare. That is how we fight our battles. That is how we fight. And it doesn't come to you when you feel like. The devil will not come when you feel like it. When he knows that you are loaded with the word to speak and fire him. Mm -mm. Whether you feel or don't feel, we don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith and not by sight. Maybe it's even at night you just wake up in the AMs to just go and ease yourself. And the devil just throws a picture because he's that stupid. At any time he can throw it at you. But you too be ready at any time to speak God's word. Don't say I'm too sleepy. Let me go and sleep. Eh? <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. Ha! Ah, this has to be the disposition of every believer. At every point in time. Every time T. Like pastor would say. <laughs> Moment M. <laughs> Hallelujah. At every time. At every moment. Don't start reminiscing. Start thinking. Start expatiating. Start wondering about that, that thing he has taught you. No, your school fees will never be paid. Eh, thank God it was done this time. Eh, but the next one, let's see what will happen. Open your mouth and say, I declare that school fees paid before the school resumes in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. If we understand this as believers, I tell you we are made. Amen. We are made. The devil will keep running with his tail in between his legs. When he came against Jesus at the temptation, what did Jesus say? It is written. It is written. It is written. Everything Jesus answered him was based on what is written. The word of God. What we answer the devil is what? It is written. What is written is what we say to him. Hallelujah. And that tells me what is written must be stored in your heart. Please, let's go to, let's close with Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4. Okay, we were looking at Numbers 13. Ah, evil report. Don't go by an evil report. Amen. Don't go by an evil report. You go to the market, the, the price of things have changed. Don't start lamenting. Don't start lamenting. The women say, ah, ah. Hey, hey. Ha, this Nigeria. Tell yourself there is a mighty supply. What your money can buy, buy it and go and be speaking God's word. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You'll be surprised. You'll come back and buy much more again. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Don't give yourself any form of stress. Amen. No stress, no shaking. Because we serve a mighty God that is seated on the throne of grace. Amen. And he has made ways for us. Yes. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. Let's end with this. Let's end with this. If we must fight these battles. With the words of our mouth. 
words, the word of God flowing out of our hearts to the situations, then this must be in place in our lives. Amen. My son, invariably my daughter, praise God. The word of God is not gender sensitive. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, it's the world that's making, bringing things where there is nothing. You understand? Making things to, oh, they say, hey, 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 let's be gender balancing. <laughs> if there is one man, there should be one woman. If there are two men doing this, let there be two women too. <laughs> balancing. It is well. <laughs> Praise God. Glory be to God. If there was gender balancing when Gideon went to fight the war, I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> Praise God. God did not say take 150 women, 150 men. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the... Is the devil bringing out things where there is nothing? That's what I'm trying to say. And the system is crashing anyway. My son, attend to my words, including you, child of daughter of, the, of Zion. Attend to my words. Attend, pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention to the word of God. Don't handle it trivially. Don't handle it casually. Hey, it's man. It's the word of God that came to Isaac. Pastor preached it so beautifully the other day. The word of God that came to Isaac, the word of God that came to him, stay in this land. Oh, there is famine, there is famine there. Stay in this land. Ah, people are dying left, right, right. Stay in this land. And he stayed and what happened? He prospered. He dug wells in the midst of farming. Attend to my word. He's the word of God that produces miracles. The word of God is the key to miracles. Pay attention to it. Sometimes it's just from reading it. One thing will just jump at you. That's the word of the Lord. Run with it. Run with it. Attend to my words. I'm just going to rush through this. Incline your ear to my saying. Incline your ear. You know what it means? To, when, when, when you have to incline your ear, that means you're pulling it close to hear what is being said. Is that not so? So when it comes to the word of God, Incline your ear. When you come to church, don't let nonsense be distracting you. Answers are going left, right, and center. Some people are in church, they're on Facebook. Some people are in church, they are, they are, they are checking their WhatsApp. Hello? Hey. Answers are passing you by. And you have prayed and said, God, give me a word. God, in this service, speak to me today. Then you come and sit and you are you're checking nonsense. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, you listen with rapt attention. You listen with, like it's only you the pastor is talking to. Like Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. Engrossed. She, could, she, didn't, she could not be bothered by what was the aroma coming from the kitchen, how Martha was doing. No. Bible said, hanging on to his every word. That's the message, right? Or is he amplified now? Hanging on to every word that he spoke. That should be our attitude. That should be our attitude when we come to church. Don't let anything distract you. When it comes to the things of God. When it comes to the word of God. Incline your ear to his saying. Incline your ear. You're walking around, you're moving around, you're doing your job, you're carrying on, you are see, you are inclining your ear, you are checking to know what is God saying. What pictures are he, is he giving to me? What pictures is he flashing in my, in my, on my inside for me to pay attention to? Not that we're just engrossed, spirit, soul, body, everything in the job until everything falls on us. No. Huh? You should be able to know eh, 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 there's a downsizing coming up. They have not told you anything. You have not heard. They didn't tell you. But you just know in your heart a downsizing is coming up. Or oh, you yeah, start praying. Then you're going to pray. And guess what? You are delivered. You are exempted. And people are wondering how did it happen for you? You had inside information because you were inclining your ear to hear. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know if I'm making sense to anybody. 
Praise God. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep God's word before. No matter how well we can quote it, open it and look at it every now and then. There is time to quote. And it's true, we'll quote it. But there's also time to look. We will look at it. Keep them before your eyes. Keep them before your eyes. Keep them before your eyes. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Let them not depart. In the Old Testament, their own command was to keep the word everywhere. Have it as bangles. Have it as frontlets. Have it as necklace. Have it on your wall. Have it everywhere. I told you the story of a, a dear relative who literally took this. And I'm telling you, in building his house, he put God's word everywhere there. It's there on the compound. It's there on the wall. Scriptures written there. You want to go that length, go that length. Amen. Hallelujah. But let it first be your heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep them, don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Your heart continually is churning. It's just rolling. It's just, it's just searching God's word. God's word. God's word. Things are coming before you. You're asking yourself, okay, so what does God's word say about this one? Not that you would have finished acting. For you now say, hey, <laughs> I should have done it. It's okay. No, no problem. You're on the learning track. Next time it happens, bring God's word before you. Hallelujah. Think first. What does the word say? Before you start doing work, I should get to a uh, <laughs> uh, policeman and uh, keke and everybody on the street. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Some people can be very annoying, actually, when driving. Is that not so? Maybe you have never been annoyed on the road. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you like telling somebody, will you move this gongoni away from the road? <laughs> Praise God. Because they are driving like they just woke up to just behold the beauty of Jaws. Going nowhere to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and they're just taking their sweet time. In front, and it's okay. It's okay. We're all going to different places at different paces, right? <laughs> and all of that for different reasons. So maybe that's why they just, maybe they just woke up to just go and buy Kosi and you, you are rushing to just allow them pass and be going your own way. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But keep God's word before you. Keep them in the midst of your heart. It's when it's in your heart that it will rise up. It's when it, you never know what's on your inside. You see, all this coming to church, you are hearing the word of God. Things are depositing in you. Hopefully, when you go to a place, or when you get to a place, a, a place of need or a place of demand, what is on your inside ought to begin to rise up. Ought to begin to rise up. <laughs> Amen. My pastor has been talking about Harry Campos now. By the time Alheri Campus starts and people are there, that's when you know, have I been hearing Pastor Dunka or have I been playing in church? <laughs> Abi Uche, am I Pastor? <laughs> Thank you very much. Abi Ola. Uh -huh. That's when you know. Have I just been coming for the show? Abi Nana. <laughs> so when Alheri Campus and you are there and they say, ah, that's when the things on your inside, things are being deposited. That's why we can't joke with the house of God. Don't joke with the presence of God. It's our deliverance. Hallelujah. It's our fort. It's our fortress. It's our fortress. Don't joke with him. Come to the house of God. Come with your children. Come with your children. Come with everyone in your house. Don't leave anybody. Anybody you don't bring, in church, bring to church will become a headache to you tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Glory be to God. And I'm saying that to say the word of God is being deposited as you're hearing. As you're hearing. As you're hearing. But after hearing, those things have been deposited. Bring them out. Stop meditating. Stop thinking. Like those animals. 
with how many stomachs after they have pushed in everything into their stomachs like goats and cows, right? When they sit at night, they will bring it out. They will start chewing. They start chewing. They start enjoying the grass. Enjoying the sweetness of the grass. That's where we enjoy the sweetness of God's word. We have come to church. Woo! As Odunka has forced it into our hearts. Pushed it down into our hearts. And that is true. But go back home. Bring it out. Start thinking. Start pondering. Start pondering the prophetic word. Ah, so I shouldn't joke with the prophetic word. Eh, I should run with the prophetic word. Oh, what are the prophetic words that have been released over me? And you start warring a good warfare with them. Hallelujah. And I tell you, your light will keep shining brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Brighter and brighter. We don't come to church just to mark attendance. We don't come to church for a show. Oh, we come to receive a deposit. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And that deposit goes out to do what's good on the outside, in the world out there. When things are coming against people, the prophetic word rises for you. The prophetic word comes to fall for you. And you remember, no, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not part of this one. Hallelujah. Though there is a casting down, I say there is a lifting up for me. There is a lifting up for me. And there's a lifting up for you in the name of Jesus. There's a lifting up for you in the name of Jesus. I see you rising up a mighty force. A mighty force in the land. That is what I see you as. A mighty force. A force. <laughs> a force that people will have to con contact for certain decisions. It is you I'm talking about. It is you I'm talking. Some people are not answering because they are still thinking, oh, it's for pastor. This is for pastor. It's you I'm talking about. I see you rising a mighty force in this land. A mighty force wherever you go. People are seeking the counsel of the Lord from you. They're coming to you to hear, hey, what has the Lord said? Oh, what should be done even in this situation? How do we go about this that has befallen us? And whatever you say is what they are doing. Whatever you say is what they are running with. Whatever you say. And that is where you bring the counsel of the Lord. You bring the word of God to them. You bring the word of God. It's not about your age. It's not about your age. It's not about your status in the society. No, it's about your stature in the spirit. It's about your stature in the spirit. Your stature in the spirit. Your stature. In the spirit. Your stature in the spirit is what is bringing deliverance to you. Bringing deliverance to your community. Bringing deliverance to the people round about you. Don't shy away when the time comes. Be bold. Be strong. Rise up. Speak. And you will see me act on your behalf. Hallelujah. Says the spirit of the Lord. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Say, I'm a mighty force. Say, I'm a mighty force. Oh, say, I'm a mighty force. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. That is you. That is you. That is you. Say, that is me. That is you. A city set upon a hill. You cannot be hid for the evident goodness of God. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Eh, hey, that is who you are. Bakatariando limaga ikoto mandigi atoshi pa likoto mayende hembro doshi antalimbra gado salie habasi atalea habasi atalea habasi atalea hemakaya kalibro hoshekeade. Lord, we give you praise. <laughs> Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. For this is your will for your people. And we stand as burning and shining lights everywhere. Hekaba liko sapata liande le boshia. Ego bozo loko sembre deke yande le boshia de. Fear not, for I am with you. 
Be not dismayed, I am your God. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid, I am with you. Don't be afraid, I am your God. I am your God. I am with you. I am with you. Ah, thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. When that time comes, be bold. Be bold. I hear that again. Be bold. Don't be afraid. Just step out. Be bold. Be bold. Don't say, ah, but I'm not, I'm not this, I'm not that. No, it is you. It is you. We know it is you. But the hand of God will come through for you. Father, we worship you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We are, we are grateful that you have chosen to use us as your battle axe. You have chosen to use us as your sharp threshing instruments, oh God. You have chosen, Father, to use us for your glory. Oh, eternal excellencies, the joy of many generations. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful. We're peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Oh, blessed be your matchless name. We are grateful. Just worship God. 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 Lamashiki alabose brakata rikato bragade labadoshi kita ato makati abreke taka ligado dolina antuskia iga pata likado shaliande. Yes, we lift you above every other. 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 Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we magnify you. Thank you. I want us to just worship God. He has done, he has moved mightily. He has done things in the lives of the people that came out here today. Hallelujah. And I just want us to worship him. One thing that must precede or go after uh, 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 miracles is worship. Worship of the almighty God. Let's give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. We are grateful for every life touched, for the burdens lifted, for the yokes that have been destroyed, for impossibilities that have been made possible. Oh, thank you for miracles. Thank you for signs. Thank you for wonders. Thank you for great and mighty testimonies. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We magnify you, Father. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you for hearing us. Are you glad you came for healing and miracle service? Celebrate Jesus. If you know you received something, if you know God touched you, if you know you came out and hands were laid on you, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Please.